There's something wrong with Esther. Ugh. Esther, what are you doing? Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. Uh, can't be good for the light bill. Ugh. Crazy. <laughs> Do you want to play? <laughs> Very funny, Esther. Damn it! Damn it! Dude who loves movies! Damn it! Damn it! Dude who loves movies! What's up dudes and dudettes? My name's Cody and I'm just a dude who loves movies and today I want to talk to you guys about the 2009 sleeper horror movie, Orphan. Now only do I want to talk to you guys about Orphan, I also want to talk to you guys about the new Scream Factory release of Orphan. We will get to that Scream Factory release in just a moment. Devastated by the loss of their unborn baby, Kate, played by Vera Farmiga, and John, played by Peter Sarsgaard, decide to adopt a child. At the orphanage, they both feel drawn to this little girl named Esther, played by Isabel Furman. And soon the couple take their new daughter home. But when dangerous series of events unfold, Kate begins to suspect that there is something evil lurking behind the child's angelic exterior. There's something wrong with Esther. I remember when Orphan was coming out, my friends and I were all excited. We're like, we're going to see this day one. So we went to the midnight showing back when that was the thing but we got there at 10 p.m because we wanted good seats back when that was the thing but you know what we were the only ones there it was like a ghost town the whole movie we're like nobody else wants to see this and i don't remember anything else really opening up against it and i know it came in fourth place that weekend uh so i'm sure something else came out and but it was one of those it was at the time the height of the horror remakes and the watered down uh pg-13 horror movies so i was like why don't people want to come out and support this rated r horror movie and plus it was part of the killer kids genre which is something i really enjoy like the good son bad seed village of the damned mikey i'm not gonna lie or sugarcoat it but i f love this movie i remember my friends and i once the movie was over we kind of looked at each other and we like our jaws were like wow that was that was different. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. It put that killer kid genre on its head. It flipped it over and did things differently. And I really applaud them for that. But I remember talking to people and they're like, no, I've, I've never seen that. I've never even heard of it. But I am happy that when I do suggest it to people and they, and they do watch it, they're like, how did I miss this movie? This movie was freaking awesome. It's like, I know. It's a little bit of a slower burn, but man, it... It, when it hits, it hits. I Like I said, it's darker toned, and I just love... I love this movie, and I love recommending it to people. Orphan was the movie I saw the most in theaters. Now, guys, don't judge me, but I saw Orphan four times in theaters. Yes, four times. And every time I went, I took somebody different to see it. I introduced it to somebody new each time. And it wasn't like I just took one person each time. I took like a group of people, so I was always rolling like four deep to see Orphan. You know, this was around the time, this was 2009, the summer of 2009. This was bef like, I started film school in August, so I, we were all super hyped. Me and all my friends were like, oh my god, this was this was a game changer for us. We were so excited. We're like, we can make movies just like this. And now I make YouTube videos. Tell me, how many times have you guys seen a movie in the theaters? And what movie? And the breakout star of this movie is Esther, played by Isabel Furman. She is excellent in this movie. She outperforms anybody. She's like this 10-year-old with his Russian accent, playing all kinds of different levels of this uh, character. So I, you know, my hat's off to her. She's a great actress. She's still a great actress. I don't know if you've seen any of her newer movies, but she does some great work still. This movie was produced by Joel Silver, Robert Downey Jr.'s wife, Susan Downey, and also Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, Mr. Titanic himself, Mr. Martin Scorsese himself, Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio actually is the person who cast Isabel Furman. He found her and he gave her the role. But then, there was some bad publicity with this movie. So in the trailer, Esther says a line... It must be hard loving a child that isn't yours. And people flipped out. It must be hard to love an adopted child as much as your own. Adoption agencies flipped out. There was so much bad publicity on there. Because of that, you know, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio kind of was like, oh, 
he stepped back and he's like, okay, I'm not promoting this movie. So they kind of stopped showing the ads. And then, if you're familiar with the story, there was something on Dr. Phil that kind of came up about the orphan. And it might be kind of related to a true life story that happened. I'm not going to go into it, but there's an episode of Dr. Phil uh, based on the real life orphan. So... Uh, there was just a bunch of bad publicity coming coming out for this movie, and it kind of hurt it. So the advertisements kind of like went back. And I think if it wasn't for that, this movie kind of would have soared. I feel like it could have got uh, sequels faster. It could have had just a better shelf life and more eyes on it. So unfortunately, the movie took a big hit because of the bad publicity and them not really promoting it as much as it should have been. And I'm one of those people who it's like, okay, so I I know this is a very touchy subject, a uh, big subject. There are plenty of kids out there that need homes, and adoption is a is a big thing. And I think if a movie like this scares you off from adopting a kid, then you probably shouldn't be adopting a kid. And these people were afraid that these children that were being adopted were going to get these ideas from the movie, which... I don't understand why they'd be seeing the movie. I I, I don't think they'd be watching the movie. It's one of those things where (laughs) um, they say that if you watch horror movies, it's going to make you a psycho or a killer. But I'm also one of those guys who are like, well, if that's true, then I can give a killer a box of Disney movies and they're going to become Prince Charming after watching it. That's not going to happen. Or I'm going to give them a bunch of rom-coms and they're going to be, oh, I changed my ways. It's not going to do that. (laughs) I'm going to shut up now (laughs) because I feel like this is a very touchy subject and I shouldn't be talking about it. So if Orphan really stopped people from adopting children or it affected adoption in a negative way, I am truly and honestly sorry. I really am. Uh, But it's just a movie. So let's talk about this release now. Here we have the Scream Factory Collector's Edition Blu-ray with commissioned artwork that I really dig on the slipcover. On the back here are the special features. There is uh, a new 2004 2K scan of the inner positive, which it does look great because the original Blu-ray that they have is from like 2010, so it is an upgrade in quality. I do wish that this was a 4K. Uh, I will buy it if it comes out on 4K. This is a a movie that I really like. I even have it on VHS back here. I got the uh, VHS, or not VHS, the uh, home, home media cardboard cutout of when that came out back in 2009. Although this is a minor upgrade with a 2K scan, I wish it was a 4K scan. I didn't mind getting it because it is a little bit of an upgrade from the uh, 2010 release. Uh, If you have that old Blu-ray, I think you're fine with it, but I did really like this artwork and I wanted to support this movie because it is one of my favorites. I even bought uh, bought it from Scream Factory's website, so I got the poster. I really like that artwork. I did get this three weeks before Street Date, which was pretty cool of Scream Factory because usually when I order from them, I get like, (laughs) I get it last. I'll order it first and get it last. This is something I would have bought a big bundle for, but I understand it may not have sold. The other thing that I am very disappointed in is the special features. There is one new special feature, and that is an interview with the composer, which is really good. It's about 17 minutes long or so. Uh, And even the, another positive thing is on the menu, they it's a cool menu with you know this artwork, and it also plays the score from the movie, so that's really cool. Uh, I just wish it would have been on 4K, but maybe someone else is going to do 4K. I will definitely buy it. I think that there are some uh, deleted scenes missing, but I could be wrong. They do have the alternate ending on, on here, which is a pretty cool alternate ending. I am glad that they went with the ending that they have on here. But if you have seen this movie, this movie... Uh, is a good time, and even the sequel slash prequel that came out uh, <laughs> like 13 years later was way better than it should have been. I enjoyed it a lot. It had a lot of twists and turns like this one. It's not as good as the first one, but I really do enjoy it, and I would love them to continue the story. It also has reversible artwork. So since I like having the commissioned artwork on the slip cover, so I usually flip it around that's the disc there that flipped over let's see now like keeping it the original right there orphan 
it's a positive release. I do like it. I wish there were more special features. And, uh, you know, I, it would have been cool to have an interview with Isabel Furman, but I'm sure they reached out to these people. I have kind of eased up and softened on Scream Factory. My friend Christian from Planet CHH did a great interview with one of the creators of Scream Factory, and he explained what goes into a release like this and what they do. He did explain that he they do reach out to almost everybody involved in the movie, but most of the time everybody says no. So that's why, you know, you get what you get with the interviews. And he also explained the documentary, which I'm a huge fan of the documentaries that they used to do on Scream Factory releases. But he was explaining that if these special features go longer than like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, then like that's when like SAG gets involved and all the union get involved and they want, you know, that has to be copyright that this and you know, all that stuff. So they kind of had to stop doing that. But then again, I see other companies do, uh, documentaries and you know so i don't know if that's just an excuse or what but yeah i will definitely link that interview down in the description it's a great interview i highly recommend it i also want to shout out my dude side hustle cinema he made me this custom slip uh, about a year ago back before uh, you know this uh the uh, screen factory release came out so this was this is what goes on my other one it's a pretty cool slip cover. I'll put his descriptions or I'll put his information in the description so you can go to his eBay store and see what kind of stuff he has. He has he does great custom slips. If you have a something that you wish had a slip, he's your man. I, the dude, Cody from Dude Who Loves Movies, have reached a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. So I wanted to do a giveaway. And I thought I would do a giveaway of this release of Orphan. I do have an unopened copy, and I might actually throw in some extras for this. Uh, but yeah, I want to thank you guys all for getting me to 1K. I couldn't have done it without you guys. All your comments, all your likes. I love it. Thank you for subscribing. So, how do you enter to win this copy of Orphan, you say? You need to be uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You need to follow me on Instagram. That's Doodoo Loves Movies, one word. And also, I want you to put down in the comments, what is your favorite movie poster of all time? Let me know what your favorite movie poster of all time is. Mine is Child's Play 2. It's just so much, so iconic to me and it had a big impact on me in my childhood. And it's the reason why I love horror now. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for getting me to 1K. I truly, honestly appreciate you. Don't forget to roundhouse to get that like button. Comment, subscribe. Go ahead, let me know what your favorite poster is and why down below. Cheers, who's respecting. Have a good day. Um, don't know what that was for. Thank you.